Mike, you do such a good job of helping us understand things at times, and I want you to know we appreciate that. This week, one of the phrases we've heard over and over again is self-scout. If you can help me understand some of the things that um, the coaches and the people who study statistics and trends and patterns and all that sort of stuff, what, do they, what kind of things do they come up with that actually help you guys do your job better? Um, you know, I think it's easy to get lost in, uh, you know, you're playing a season, it's easy to get lost in what everybody else is doing. And it's, you don't really get a time to look and reflect on yourself, maybe in life in general, but in football especially. So this bye week, when they say self-scout, it's like, okay, we get a chance to, for a week straight, we don't have to focus on any opponent. We can focus on, let's watch all our games. Let's go through all our practices. And I'm not the statistics guy, but I'm sure they break it down on this play was successful this many times. This was unsuccessful. We are averaging this many yards on this, whatever it may be. Um, and then we can take that and how do we, after this buy, come back and improve as a team. Uh, so being able to do that is critical for a team, uh, whether it's an early buy or a buy week 15 or whatever week we're on. Uh, that's a time where not only can players get their bodies back, but we can come back and it's really like a fresh start. Like, hey, we have these plays that have been working. We've got these plays that haven't been working as well. How can we fix those plays? How can we improve the ones that have been working? You probably lead the team in touchdowns per catch. Uh, so my self scout says throw Mac with the ball more. Yeah, I, if if it comes my way, I'll, I'll I'll I do my best to to make sure the the touchdown for catch ratio doesn't get messed up. Yeah, is that something which you had been aware of for of your thirteen catches or TDs? What, was that a number that you knew upon catching the touchdown on Sunday? Oh no, uh, the ball just came to me, and I'm. I, ra I rarely know my, my stats, except for tackles. I, I always know my tackle. I compete. Um, I don't know. Catchers kind of just, they, they, they come, and you can kind of get lost in, uh, do I have three? Like, oh, I had a cool game where I had three. You can forget. But a tackle's like, me and Seathan actually go back and forth because he, me and him both have eight. And it's like, who's going to get to double digits first? Who's going to end the season with the most? Uh, so that's a, it's a little competition, so it's good. In, in terms of uh, every player on special teams obviously knows they have to do it well. You obviously take it really, really seriously, which has made you a staple in the special teams unit good at it. Is there a difference, you think, in, in mentality of certain special teams players where some really, really take it seriously like you do? Some just see it, okay, it's a necessary thing. I have to stay in the league. Uh, maybe on some teams, but I think our team, everybody takes special teams really seriously. I think the positions that I'm in are optimal for making tackles, uh, whether that's on punt or kickoff. Uh, all returns that get sent to the backside, I'm the first that has a chance. Obviously, at gunner, I'm the first that has a chance. So it's easy to make tackles the, oh, he's a good te special team or he's not. Uh, like you look at a guy like Fedge, who's really the leader of our special teams unit. He's a signal caller in every unit, whether it's punt return, kickoff, kickoff return, or punt. Uh, but he's not going to be the first guy down there because he has two gunners that are playing well this season, um, and he has a bunch of interior guys that are playing well. So to have all those guys, he may not have the tackles, but you take him out of the equation, and, it, and are we a success? Are we protecting up punts as well? Are we identifying what kick, kickers are doing direction, directional-wise? Are we identifying what putters are doing directionally? So it's easy to say Max, the the guy on, on, on special teams because I have tackles and – I dance and I do all types of wild stuff to bring attention. Um, but every guy on our unit is a ball player. Like it takes a, a different type of person to, to be able to do that, especially the ones that are playing a bunch of snaps offensively or defensively and then can go in there and do well on special teams. I'm curious if your competition with Seaton involves yards also, because you had, you had one special teams tackle that was for a four yard loss on a punt return. Um, no, it's just pure tackles. Pure tackles, yeah. The guy for it, was, it, it was good um, because you, you don't look at the numbers, but statistically, if you can back a team up, you know they 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 go in the negative on punt return. That that helps helps the, the team's average at the end of the year when you say, hey, how did our punt unit do? Uh, so yeah, it's good, but it's, a tackle is nice. Uh, but I definitely take that over like a five yard gain or a fifteen yard gain on a punt. Based on you've told us earlier this year, that was more satisfying to you than the touchdown catch, correct? Yeah, I love I love tackles. Tackles are uh, are great. That and, and down and balls inside the fifth, the the five. How 
certain were you that you had completed the catch? Um, I knew I caught it for sure. Um, and I knew I had my feet in. But I know it can be tough sometimes for refs to see that angle when guys kind of have to hug over the ball. Um, but I, I knew, like, if it came down to it, I would have argued and be like, throw the flag or whatever. I guess you don't have to on that because it's a touchdown score anyway. But, uh, yeah, I was confident I had it. You were rewatching it. Were you a little impressed with yourself? Like the concentration, the focus, the toes, um, like getting everything. That's like, it was cool. It was good. Yeah, I think I just made it harder than it needed to be. If I just jump a little bit higher, I can just catch it the first time and then, but then I wouldn't have made the ESPN. It wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have brought their attention and it wouldn't really be me. Who, who are the first guys, names that come to mind if I asked who's most improved on this team most from improved. a year ago? Into your mind on either side um, I don't know. That's tough. I think we've had we've improved really well as a, as, as a team. It's hard to improve as an individual player in this league without your team being successful as well. Um, like we're winning games. Is it because the quarterback, or is it because the O line is starting to mesh a little bit better, or is it because the running backs are starting to run the ball better? So defenses are playing differently. Our receivers getting open, uh, and then likewise on defense. So. I don't know if I can identify like specific players, but I think as a unit, we're starting to understand. We're getting a little older. Guys are starting to understand what it takes to to, to win, and they're, they're feeling comfortable. I think it, when you're a rookie, it's, everything's new. You're at week 12, and you're like, oh, season's done. And then you like, oh, wait, I got five more games before we're, we're done because uh, you're on that college mindset. So getting getting used to what it's like to be in the NFL is, has definitely helped us this year. Do you have any plans for the bye week? Um, cleaning. Um, I'm doing some research on some new animals. Uh, either another snake or maybe a gator. Are you going to get a pick We'll see. We'll see. Um, and then I'm going, I think I'm going scuba diving uh, at the Frost Museum. So a little bit of stuff around here, but yeah, a staycation. Are you saying you're considering acquiring an alligator? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's been a. Well, you can you can start them off in the small small tanks, um, and then I can swap them out once they get to a certain size until I can get a place big enough where I can get the the cool pool that I want. I, I was gonna <laughs> say they <clears throat> funny, but they tend to grow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just sw I just swap them out with the alligator farm. I take the little one, they get the the big one. What do you what do you do with a pet alligator? Just look at it. Um, yeah, like it feed it. You can walk it if you want. You can carry it. Um, like I have the snakes now, but they don't chew up my my house like dogs do. You know, I don't have to clean up their poop as as much as uh, dogs do. They don't bark. They don't keep me up at night. And they don't fake like they're gonna protect me if a robber came in, even though they probably would. They don't yeah. eat you either. No, uh, <laughs> gators won't. They won't bother because I got the little ones. Also. Weekend is that on the agenda? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, probably. Um, and we'll see, we'll see. I got, yeah. No, no wild ones, no wild ones. That's a, that's an off season uh, project. You said you walk them. Yeah. So when you walk them, your neighbors think what? There goes Mac again. Because I walk around the neighborhood with the snakes already. How many snakes do you have in Walker? I got a bow and a ball python. How big are they? Uh, one's like five foot, the other one's 11 and a half, maybe, 11. Have you ever had a dog or a cat? Or I did, yeah. I would love to have a, a dog. Uh, so I ended up getting the snakes in college because everybody gets a dog. And then we go to training camp and we stay in this hotel for a month. And all the guys were like, hey, girl that I'm talking to at the time, can you take care of my dog? And then she's like, yeah, of course. And then the first week goes by and she's like, this is, this is I don't want to take care of this dog all day. So she's like, I can't take care of it. He tries to get somebody to take care of it. Neither of them take care of it. They come home, the house is ruined. They're paying rent at some place. They get kicked out. So it was like, why not get a snake who's everything's set? Like, I could leave for a month, and they'd be fine. So you, you walk the snakes out. How oh, I don't walk them. I put them around my neck, and we go for a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't take them for slithers. So you'll walk around your neighborhood with the snakes around your neck. Mm -hmm. What are their names? Uh, one doesn't have a name because I was going to breed them originally. And then one is named Nikiti. Would you 
Would you, sorry, back to the alligator. If you were taking an alligator on a walk, do you have a leash for it? <laughs> yeah, you can put a little, uh, you know, those little rat dogs that people have, little slipper dogs, a little tiny ones, same type of leash. We want to emphasize being safe on the bike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is right in my this is right in my alleyway. <laughs>